at Northern Ireland's Carricka Reed Rope Bridge. Oh, Carricka Reed, yeah. You know that Instagram famous bridge oh, swaying over the ocean? Oh, right, right. We've got some amazing source material on a rescue that happened there. And let me tell you, this was not your average day at the office for the emergency responders, not at all. Absolutely. What's so fascinating about this deep dive is that it shows the unique challenges rescue teams face in places where normal, you know, typical evacuation procedures just aren't possible. Right. You're dealing with rough terrain, unpredictable weather conditions. It takes a different kind of skill set for sure. And a lot of quick thinking, I would imagine. Resourcefulness. Resourcefulness. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Picture this. You've got tourists milling about. You've got that incredible coastal wind whipping around. Yeah. Seems like a pretty normal day at Carricka Reed. Right. Except someone has had an accident on the trail on the far side of the bridge. Oh. Beyond that rocky outcropping. Okay, so they're really out there. They're really out there. Yeah. Now, your first thought might be, okay, well, they'll just walk them back over the bridge. Yeah. Seems straightforward enough. But as it turns out, not so easy. Oh. That rope bridge, as iconic and as cool as it is, is not exactly designed to be like a stretcher transport. All that movement, the potential for panic in the patient, mm. getting them back on foot just wasn't going to be possible. No. And this is where things get really fascinating because the solution they end up choosing was a helicopter rescue. Yeah. Which, again, you might think at first glance, oh, airlift. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. But, and this is a big but. This is where the real expertise comes in. Oh, absolutely. The wind conditions at Carrick Reed, they're kind of legendary. Mm. They are notoriously fierce. Intense. And the initial plan was to try to pluck the injured person right off the rock face. Wow. Talk about a high pressure situation, right? Absolutely. And, you know, when you're dealing with a situation like that, it's, it's not just about, you know, knowing how to fly a helicopter. Yeah. It's about really understanding the aerodynamics. It's about the microclimates. You know, those pilots, they train extensively specifically for these situations where you've got updrafts and you've got turbulence potentially from the cliffs themselves. Right. And all of that can make every single maneuver just absolutely critical. Oh, yeah. You've got to think about the safety of the person you're rescuing, obviously. Yeah. You've got the crew on board and you've got the integrity of the helicopter itself. It's really, truly precision flying when you get to that level. Yeah, it's amazing. Rope bridge. Crazy high up. Oh, yeah. Iconic bridge. Yeah. But there's way more to it than just that one photo op. Right. Okay. So imagine way back, like 1600s, you're a fisherman. You got to get to this island, obviously, to, you know, fish. Makes sense. So what do you do? You build a bridge out of rope over yeah. this chasm, basically. 66 feet above the ocean. Can you imagine? And it's windy. We're talking the Atlantic here. Intent. What's wild is how something so purely practical becomes this like global symbol of, I don't know, bravery or something. It's crazy. Like, hey, honey, let's go risk our necks on that bridge for fun. But it speaks to something, right? How we interact with landscapes changes. Absolutely. What's functional in one minute is a cultural icon the next. Yeah. And beyond the bridge itself, the setting, wow, those cliffs carved out by the ocean, they're practically a history book visually. Right. You get that sense of like raw power standing there. And, and I read that those cliffs, they're like evidence of volcanoes, millions oh. of years old. Oh, yeah. That whole coastline is volcanic. Like imagine lava flows hardening into these basalt layers. And over time, erosion carves them into the cliffs. Shows you how the Earth's always changing. That blows my mind. It's like a time capsule, but geological. But it's not just about the bridge or the cliffs, is it? Like, what about the island itself? Apparently, it's pretty isolated, rocky, wildflowers. It's got this tranquility. You cross that bridge, and it's like entering a different world. Different ecosystem, too. You get seabirds nesting on those cliffs, guillemots, razorbills, kittiwakes. It's a haven for them. So it's like you've got the adrenaline rush of the bridge, but then this quiet beauty on the island. Exactly. Sometimes the best experiences are off the beaten track. Totally. Makes you think, right? Dunluce Castle and Glenora Forest Park. Mm. Each one kind of promises this, this journey through this captivating blend of nature and history that Northern Ireland's known for. Okay, so let's, let's start with Dunluce Castle, perched right on the edge of a cliff overlooking the Atlantic. I, I mean, honestly, just from the pictures, it looks like something straight out of a movie set. What's the story behind this This dramatic ruin. Well, Dunluce, it's not just a pretty facade. Back in the 16th century, this was a stronghold. It was home to the McDonald clan. 
They were a powerful bunch vying for control with, well, with English monarchs, among others. It's, it's a fascinating period. Oh, I bet. Power struggles, ancient clans. I mean, it's all there. Oh, absolutely. And one detail that always gets me is how the castle's lower ward met its end. During a storm back in 1639, a huge chunk of it just collapsed. It just crumbled into the sea. Wait, seriously, a whole section of the castle just gone like that? Just gone. Swept away by the sea. Imagine the stories those walls could tell. Wow, that's, that's incredible. It really makes you think, doesn't it? And speaking of stories, you can't talk about Dunluce without mentioning the Giant's Causeway. What gets me is that it's right nearby. It's like stepping straight from, well, history into legend. Precisely. We're talking about a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Thousands of these basalt columns formed by volcanic activity millions of years ago. It's incredible. But then you add in that legend of Finn McCool, the Irish giant who supposedly built the causeway to battle a Scottish rival. I mean, it just adds a whole other dimension to it. It really makes you wonder what our ancestors would made of those formations, you know, long before we had any kind of scientific explanation. I know. It really captures the imagination, doesn't it? it Absolutely. Now, speaking of exploring, your sources suggest you're not one to just stick to the main attractions. What about those hidden gems along the Causeway Coast? What else should our listener explore? Oh, the Causeway Coastal Route, it's an absolute must do for anyone who really wants to experience the, you know, the raw beauty of the region. Just imagine driving along these dramatic cliff edges, the wind in your hair, the vast Atlantic stretching out before you. Okay, stop, stop. You're painting such a vivid picture here. I can practically smell the salt air. Right. Now picture this. You round a bend in the road, and suddenly you stumble upon White Rocks Beach. These towering chalk cliffs that just plunge straight into this turquoise water. And there are hidden caves there, too. Just yeah. Whispering tales of, you know, smugglers and pirates from long ago. Right. You had me at hidden caves. That's, that's the kind of discovery I live for. Right. It's incredible. And, you know, for those who prefer to, you know, to have their adventures on foot, the Causeway Coast is also laced with these amazing hiking trails. They wind through rolling hills and offer the most breathtaking vistas you can imagine. Picture this. You're up high, binoculars in hand, spotting seabirds soaring above that rugged coastline. Okay, you've convinced me I need to book a trip, like, <laughs> now. But all that exploring is bound to work up an appetite. Your sources mention you appreciate good food. Any local delicacies our listeners should seek out? Absolutely. You've got to check out the towns of Portrish and Port Ballantrae. They're nestled right along the Causeway Coastal Route, and they offer this perfect blend of you know, picturesque charm and just amazing culinary delights. I'm all ears. What kind of culinary adventures await in these towns? Oh, you're talking about fresh off the boat seafood? Maybe some traditional Irish stew. Yeah. Or, you know, for a real hearty meal, you can't go wrong with a classic Ulster fry up. Okay, now you're speaking my language. So we've got this castle, right, perched on the edge of a cliff. We've got this legendary causeway. We've got these hidden coastal gems just waiting to be discovered. But your sources, they also led us to something, well, completely different. Let's switch gears a bit and head inland to Glenaris Forest Park. It's often called the Queen of the Glens, and I'm curious to hear why. It really is a world away from that, that rugged drama of the coast. But equally captivating, I promise you. Imagine stepping into this world of, you know, cascading waterfalls and lush, vibrant green foliage, ancient trees that just seem to hold uh, like centuries of stories within them. Glanriff is all about, well, embracing tranquility. It's about connecting with nature on this whole other level. Your notes mention two waterfalls in particular, Esna Crub and Esna La Rock. I mean, honestly, the names themselves sound almost mythical. What is it about these waterfalls that makes them so special? They're incredible. Esna Crub, it's like something straight out of a fairy tale. It plunges dramatically into this narrow gorge, you know, mm -hmm. and the water just thunders down these moss-covered rocks. It's truly an awe-inspiring sight, especially after a good rain. Wow, I can only imagine. And then there's Esna La Rock. It's sort of cascades down this series of rocky steps, creating this this mesmerizing symphony of sound and motion. It's it's really something else. I can practically hear the water rushing over the rocks as we speak. It sounds like Glenariff has something to offer everyone. From like those adrenaline junkies looking for, you know, a challenging hike to those who prefer a more peaceful stroll through nature. Exactly. You're spot on. Whether you're you know, looking for that challenging hike to take in those panoramic views, or you prefer a more leisurely stroll along those well-maintained paths, there's a trail in Glenariff to suit every pace. And whatever you do, keep your eyes peeled for the local wildlife. Oh, right. You mentioned the forest being just teeming with life. 
What kinds of creatures might our listener encounter on these woodland adventures? Well, if you're lucky, you might catch a glimpse of the elusive red squirrel. You know, their bushy tails just flash by, a touch of auburn against all that green. And you might even spot a deer, you know, gracefully navigating the woodland paths. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon. Wow, how magical. It really is. And the bird song. It's incredible. Keep an ear out for the melodic calls of robins and wrens and chaffinches. They're all over. So we've journeyed from the ruins of Dunluce Castle with those windswept cliffs to the tranquility of Glenariff Forest Park. It's amazing to me how these, these diverse landscapes, each with its own unique character, how they all come together to create this, this tapestry of what we call Northern Ireland. What connects these seemingly different experiences for you? What ties it all together? It really is like you've you've curated this incredible journey for the senses, from those rugged cliffs to the peacefulness of the forest. What do you think ties it all together? Well, for me, it's the storytelling. You know, it's that, that invisible thread that seems to be woven through the landscape, connecting those ancient myths, like the giants of the giant's causeway, to, well, even whispers of, say, banshees haunting the ruins of Dunluce Castle. Oh, you've definitely piqued my curiosity about those ghostly tales. Right. What's the story behind this Dunluce Banshee? Well, legend has it that there was this, this heartbroken woman. Her lover was lost at sea, and in her grief, she threw herself from the castle walls. And now it's said that her, her mournful cries echo through the ruins, oh. a kind of harbinger of misfortune, they said. Oh, wow. A tragic love story and a haunting, it's like classic castle folklore. But it's not just the legends, is it? It's those layers of history that are just embedded in these places. Exactly. You know, you think about the McDonald clan at Dunluce. They weren't just, you know, sitting around telling ghost stories. They were embroiled in power struggles, mm. navigating these complex alliances and betrayals. It was a turbulent time. I bet. And their story, it's like this microcosm of Northern Ireland's own complex history. It's a reminder that these landscapes, they've witnessed centuries of change, of resilience, of, well, the enduring spirit of the people. It's incredible to think about. It really is. Those castle walls, I mean, they could tell a thousand stories if they could only speak. You've given our listeners so much to consider today. The history, the legends, the scenery, even some culinary tips. Any final thoughts for them as they... Well, as they plan their own Northern Ireland adventure. You know, don't just go to see these places. Go to feel them. Let yourself get delightfully lost, you know. Whether you're standing on those windswept cliffs at Dunluce or you're wandering through the beauty of Glenriff, talk to the locals. Hear their stories. Savor the flavors of the land. Yeah. Because it's in those unscripted moments, that's where you truly connect with the place. That's how you discover those hidden gems that make it unforgettable. Off the beaten path. Merlot Bay. It truly is a hidden gem, Merlot Bay. And what's really remarkable is that its beauty, it all comes from millions of years of geological processes. I'm talking volcanic activity. Yeah. I'm talking glacial erosion. It's nature at its most powerful. Talk about feeling insignificant. And did I hear right? Even Hollywood couldn't resist Merlot Bay. You heard right. It's been in several movies and TV shows, most famously Game of Thrones. Those dramatic cliffs and, you know, those sweeping vistas, they just look incredible on screen. So we've got these epic landscapes, right? But from there, we go to valleys, and these valleys were carved by, well, time. Our next stop is the Glens of Antrim. Nine unique glens, each with its own character. What's waiting for us there? Well, okay, if you want breathtaking scenery, you have to see Clenariff. It's called the Queen of the Glens, and it does not disappoint. But if you want to see history, you have to go to Glenarm. This glen has Glenarm Castle. It's like this symbol of the landed gentry in Ireland. You know, it's a place where history really comes alive. Castles and history. Sign me up. <laughs> but I'm interested in this next place. It's not every day you find Cornish charm on the Irish coast. Tell me more about Cushendon. Oh, yeah, Cushendon. It's a great example of how personal stories can, like, change a place forever. So in the early 1900s, Baron Cushendon, he wanted to rebuild the village. But he wanted to rebuild it in the Cornish style. Why? As a tribute to his wife, who is from Cornwall. So when you walk through the village, you see this unique blend of architectural styles. Wow. What a story. That's love and architecture. Yeah. And as if that wasn't enough, Cushendon also has those amazing sea caves. Yeah, the caves of Cushendon. They were carved out by waves over thousands of years. And they've even got a little bit of that Hollywood magic, too, because they were in Game of Thrones. Okay, so we've got rugged cliffs, a little bit of Hollywood, even a love story all wrapped up in architecture. What else does the Northern Ireland coast have for us? How about a nice scenic drive along the Antrim Coast Road? Hmm. We can stop at this tranquil little place called Red Bay. 
lead the way. Let's do it. Right. Red Bay. Okay, yeah, that sounds like the perfect place to just like catch your breath, you know, after all that exploring. But I have a feeling I have a feeling that you've got something else, something else up your sleeve, something a little more, you know, adventurous. You know me way too well. <laughs> okay, so get ready because we're about to tackle the Gobbins Cliff Path. Imagine this. Suspension bridges, stairways built right into the cliff, tunnels and waves crashing below you. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. That sounds amazing. But seriously, it's hard to believe that they built this like over 100 years ago. It really shows you the vision and the engineering of the time. It opened in 1902, but, you know, storms and erosion caused a lot of damage over the years. They actually had to close it for a while. Yeah. But thankfully, they were able to restore it. And they used modern techniques, but they kept that historical feel. It's really incredible to think that they were building stuff like that back then. Yeah, it makes you think, right? Sometimes the best experiences come from working with nature, not trying to control it. But okay, let's leave the cliffs behind for a minute. Our sources are telling us about the Copeland Islands and the Ards Peninsula. What are we going to find there? Okay, picture this. Beaches, rolling hills, charming little towns. It's a big change from the dramatic coast we've been seeing. The Ards Peninsula is all about slowing down. It's peaceful there. And on the peninsula, we find Donagati, home to a very iconic lighthouse. You know, lighthouses have always kind of fascinated me. They're like these solitary figures, standing watch, guiding sailors through the dark in the storms. They're pretty remarkable, that's for sure. And Donaghetti's lighthouse has quite a history. I mean, for centuries, its beam has been cutting through the fog, guiding ships past the, honestly, kind of treacherous waters of the North Channel. It's a symbol of hope, you know, for mariners, mm. a beacon. Donaghetti's lighthouse. It reminds us that even when you feel isolated, there's always someone looking out for you. But Donaghetti wasn't the only guardian of these waters. Groomsport. It's a quick trip across the water, and it really shows you the human cost of those sea journeys. Yeah, Groomsport has this lifeboat station museum. It's a reminder of the lifeboat crews. You know, the ones who risked their lives to save others from shipwrecks. It's really humbling when you think about the courage it takes to face those storms. But from tales of bravery to tranquil gardens, our sources tell us about this estate. It's on the Ards Peninsula, they call it. 